Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you are blessed and enriched with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray for the condition and the direction of our nation and our world. We want to pray for our local community and region. We want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church members in particular, and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for allowing us to be a part of this incredible truth. God, we pray for a genuine move of the Holy Ghost in the 21st century, one that is transformative and earth shaking. We believe in that in the name of Jesus. We also pray for our local community and region. Father, we pray that you'll continue to open up great doors of utterance and supernatural influence. We also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. Pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven over this congregation and this people. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, whether it's across town or on the other side of the world, we pray that you furnish each and every one of them with a hedge of protection. We ask all these things in the name, above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said amen. I want to direct our attention to an incredibly important and familiar passage of scripture found here in Romans chapter number one, verse number 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. That's what I want to talk about. Without excuse. I saw a short clip while I was enjoying my coffee very, very early this morning. I was um, watching a very small clip of Elon Musk, incredibly interesting individual. And um, it was a very relaxed setting. He's very engaging intellectual person and the person was asking him questions, philosophical questions, his philosophical outlook on the world, so on and so forth. And he made a statement that I thought that was very thought provoking. He said, the universe is the answer. We just have to ask the right questions. I want to, I, I thought early in the morning with a cup of coffee in one hand that that was so, for a person that doesn't have truth and for a person that doesn't know God like you and I do, I thought that that was incredibly thought provoking. The universe is the answer. We just have to ask the right questions. And I could not help think about this scripture here in Romans chapter number one, that the universe that has no known, no observable, no according to computations, Mathematical computations has guided man in the universe. Um, and of course, now we have telescopes that can see farther than they've ever seen before, farther than the Hubble um, telescope. 
It has no known perimeters. It is infinite. Even with the infinitude of space and, and the incredible dynamics, everything changes in space. You know, somebody was um, giving a commentary on 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, where one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And they were postulating that that is only possible, that scripture is only possible if you are outside of the gravitational pull of the earth, where time is different. Um, and all of these things, all of these types of computations are, have, have been resolved, quote unquote, I'm rolling my eyes, quote unquote, according to mathematics. Astrophysicists, people that are into uh, all kinds of theoretical perceptions and, and theories and uh, hypothesis, so on and so forth. The only way that that could be possible is if you're outside of the gravitational pull and you are comparing where that is compared to the gravitational pull on the Earth, which has a certain influence on time. And so you're outside of time and in time, and we could talk a lot about that. And I'm fascinated with some of these kinds of things when it gets into, uh, into these kinds of things. But I wanna talk specifically about Romans chapter one and the verse that I read to you that God's first revelation of himself is through the universe. Mankind for thousands of years, not thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands like evolutionists would have you to think, but nonetheless, thousands of years, man has looked into the starry sky even without the aid of any type of telescope or any type of enhancement that would bring greater definition beyond the human eye. The human eye, the five senses were given to us, designed by God in our nature that we could analyze, we could interpret, we could comprehend, certain things in our physical world. It is a gift. The five senses are a gift in our physical nature. The observable universe was God's first methodology, if I could put it that way, of revealing himself to man, okay? So that even his God Godhead, the omnipotence, the power, the identity, the, the comprehension that only a God could have done this. To not come to that conclusion, the Bible says we are without excuse. That's one of the reasons why I truly believe that intellectualism is one of the clearest and most defined enemies of revelation. Because just over the last two or three centuries with quote unquote scientific exploration, scientific study, um, Darwin's origin of species, which was transformative away from God. It was transformative away from God because it offered, quote unquote, a scientific explanation for the adaptation of and random mutations among species, that there would be that a species of an animal could ultimately change to adapt to their environment. 
And that's in a nutshell. There's actually much more than that. You already know that. However, that was the missing link for many people that were already dis disillusioned by denominationalism. There were some mainline denominations in America and in the world at that time that were offering a biblical explanation without the power, without the experience of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the revelation of truth according to the Word of God. Make no mistake about it. The people that are leaving Christianity today is because of the wrong witness, okay? Um, for millions and millions and millions of people, the only witness and representation that they've ever known of Christianity has either been Catholic, mainline denominational, Protestant denomination, um, even non -denom even some of the modern non-denominational stuff. That is the only, and there are a lot of people that are absolutely turned off by that. It doesn't, it doesn't check past the truth test. It doesn't, it doesn't deliver what the truth delivers from the word of God. And so here God has given his first, his first revelation, if I could put it that way, of himself is through nature. More specifically, according to Romans chapter one, the observable universe. We're not talking about telescopes. We can go there if you want to. But this, when this was written, okay, they didn't have telescopes. They may have had some very, very crude instrumentation um, that was even used by in maritime usage on water for navigation, so on and so forth. But nothing that would give the type of of awe and wonder that we enjoy in this day by seeing amazing pictures of the universe and, and some of the, the incredible revelations that are brought forth by these. Even the Hubble telescope has brought forth things that I just, in amazement, that is in the universe. When this scripture was written 2,000 years ago approximately, there was none of those types of things. Just the observable universe. Yes, they had astrology. Yes, they had crude forms of astronomy, but they were leading man away from God. Astrology was man's looking for the answers of life in the stars without God. But all of the universe is a demonstration. It is a revelation of how God reveals himself through nature. And if we don't ask those kinds of questions and come to those types of conclusions, we are without excuse. And this is why in the day and age in which we live where we have all this, it's just become so fluid and it's just become a component of, of, of science and a component component of myth, mythology and a component of science fiction and a component of what do I think and this is what I think and philosophy and, and man's opinion. It's nonsense. Nonsense. I thank God that at 30 years of age, I got a revelation of truth. It's simple in terms of being able to be understood, but it is a threshold to a world that is limitless and has no ending, full of awe and wonder. Take time today and thank God for the incredible truths that are so freely given unto us. It's incredible. Thank you for joining us today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. God bless you.